Okay guys, it is week seven and for a couple of weeks we are going to focus on exponents and leave behind the whole uh, graphing, parent functions, uh, transformations. Uh, we get to leave that behind for just a little while and go focus on just straight up algebra again. And Exponents, it's crazy because I know you've done this before. I know you did it in Algebra 1. You may have even started these things like in middle school. But um, they come back with a vengeance and you really do have to have a good understanding of what they are. Because uh, after this week and, and uh, you know going into next week and, and the end of our summer lessons, uh, we're going to learn about a brand new topic called a logarithm which is a big deal and it is directly related to exponents. So the better you know this, um, the better or the easier time I guess you're going to have with that. So yay, uh, this is going to be a lot of review today and maybe a couple new things if, uh, if you didn't get to do it back in the day. Uh, we are going to start by just writing down all the different exponent rules that we have, okay? Um, <laughs> like it says here, many rules seen many times for many years, but no one's really good at it until they hit Algebra 2. Um, and by the end of that year, hopefully you're pretty good at it. So multiplying with like bases. Okay, so just so we're clear, uh, the base is whatever the number is down here that's actually being raised to the exponent. So I'm going to write it like this, b to the n. The b is the base. Uh, the n, of course, is the exponent. So when it says multiplying with like bases, that's going to be if I'm saying something like I have a base um, raised to an exponent multiplied by a base raised to a different exponent. Okay, And so whenever that happens, um, all that you have to do, and if, if you don't remember, all you have to do is you have to add the exponents. So you write the base one time and just add their exponents together just like that. So of course everything you see here could be a number, um, there could be variables. I'm doing everything with variables just to make it generic, but for a concrete example, uh, let's pretend that it was like x to the third times x to the fifth. So if it looked like that, it just becomes x to the eighth because it says up here to add their um, exponents. Okay. So the next one, a power raised to a power. So power is another word for exponent. So it would be like an exponent. Maybe that's got an exponent of A. And then it's raised to another exponent. And in fact, just to make it um, a little better, let's sneak that A on the inside of that. This is a little more clear. Okay, so a base raised to a power, and then all of that is raised to another power, okay? That is when, and only when, you get to multiply your exponents, okay? So here you add them, here you do get to multiply them. So for an example, if it was like a squared, sorry, not a squared, <laughs> x squared to the fifth, um, then you get to multiply, and it would be x to the tenth. All right, cool. Now, what about dividing with like bases? Well, um, dividing would be this situation, except now it's a division problem instead of a multiplication. So I'm going to recopy that exact same thing, except with division now. And you might actually see a division symbol. Usually at your age, you will see a fraction bar to represent division. And this is what it would probably look like. And when this happens, um, it's the opposite of this. So here, back there, we added exponents. And all that means is now we are going to subtract exponents. And it should be the numerator exponent minus the exponent that's in the denominator. So top minus bottom, that's kind of how you work that. So for a concrete example, we'll go back to the um, 5 and the 3. If it was something like that, it would just become x squared. Okay, and hopefully that makes sense because if you expand that, it's just x times x times x times x times x five times divided by x times x times x, and you can cross out x's. You can cancel them out, kind of like we've had this lesson before where you get to cancel junk out. So um, hopefully that makes sense. So let me write that out, what I just said. It's the same thing as x, 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 x over x, x, 
x, x. So five of them on top, three of them on bottom, and you get to cancel whatever's common to both. So gone, 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 and whatever's left over is this x, and there's two of them up here, so x squared on top. So that's kind of why that rule works if you were curious. Okay, now a power of zero. I'm always impressed at how many people do remember this one. If you have an exponent raised to the zeroth power, okay, um, I'm impressed with how many people do know that that is in fact one. That is hard to explain, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's one of those where you're like, wait a minute, so I'm multiplying a number by itself zero times and somehow that turns into a one. Okay, mathematically, that's not going to make sense to you. Um, think of this as just a rule that the math world a long time ago, somebody said, you know what? There's no answer for this, so let's just assign an answer to it and then everybody use it. That's kind of what this is. It's almost like, hey, let's just say it's that, and now if everybody does it this way, we'll all be mathing the same. And I'm sure there's some good sound reason and a proof out there, but I don't know it. Um, for me, that hurts my head. Okay, um, a negative power. So these are the ones that people hate. Um, anytime you have a negative exponent, guys, that is that is poor form. That's what I'm going to write. Poor form. Nobody likes him. Nobody likes this guy. We don't like negative exponents. It's weird, okay? And it's hard to think about. So when you see them, what you're supposed to do is... Um, a negative exponent is the same thing as, as turning this into its reciprocal. So right now I've got the base as a b. So what happens is it is it the reciprocal of b is 1 over b, and it's now to the a power, okay? So you lose the negative that's on it is what ends up happening. You lose that negative. So it's a reciprocal, and then you stick the power back on it. Um, so an example of this would be like if I say 3 to the negative second power, okay? What I would do first is say, ooh, I don't like the negative exponent, so I'm going to write that as 1 third to the second power. And if you're wondering why I didn't put a 2 on both of these numbers, well, I did. You just don't see it. They're really both squared, to be fair, right? To be consistent, that's a squared and that's a squared. But 1 to any power is always going to be 1, so there's really no point in writing that exponent up there. So now it's just 1 ninth. And that's how this works, and it's pretty awesome like that, okay? So it takes something that's hard to think about, and by doing that reciprocal, it makes it make sense. Now we're going to get into combinations, okay? And um, a combo of everything just means, and we're going to do several examples, it just means I'm putting all these rules together and figuring out, like, how to make sense of them, okay? So we're going to start with something kind of easy, maybe? Yikes. There she goes. That was weird. Okay, so we're going to start with something kind of easy and, and just see how this, this escalates. All right, let's pretend that we have like negative 2, x to the third, um, maybe times um, 3x to the second y. Okay, so we've got something like this going on, and you're multiplying these two terms. Now remember that, there, I mean, there's no plus or minus here, guys. Nothing's being added or subtracted, and multiplication you can do in any order you want. So in a way, and I'm going to do this on the first one, then I'll probably do it in my head on the on the ones to come, but in, in, in a way you can sort of rearrange this because there's no parentheses and no extra weird exponents, so you're really just grouping like terms. I, um, oh, why, where did that 6 come from? Okay, 3, sorry. So it's really like you can move the numbers together, so negative 2 and 3 can go together. Then the x to the third and the x squared can be grouped together, and then the y can be grouped together. This grouping, even if you don't write it, is kind of what you need to be doing in your head when you're mathing this out. So you do the numbers together and get a negative 6. 
and that's just normal multiply, right? Now the rule when you're multiplying x's is that you they have the same base, so you add their exponents. And then you've got this y fella back here. There's nobody going with him, so you just recopy him. Okay, so let's uh, step it up a notch where maybe we do have, um, you know, some parentheses or extra exponents. And, and everybody always wigs out a little bit at division, so let me see what I can do here. Let's do like um, 2y and then 3x squared to the third all over something like y to the third. Let me do a 9 here. 9y to the third um, x squared. I don't know, something like that. Actually, no, I'm going to make that like an x to the, no, that's good, x squared. Wow, I'm so indecisive. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's say it's a problem like this, right? So it's it looks overwhelming, but you just uh, just start ch chomping away at it, you know. Um, hopefully, your intuition tells you to work on the parentheses first because there's it's parentheses with an exponent here. And if you are thinking of something like PEMDAS, then that should be what you want to do first. Now, here's where people mess up. This 3 means cubed. So you have to cube everything that's inside of here, okay? And what that means is this is the same thing. I'm going to kind of write it off to the side because this is where, even in calculus, my students mess this up. You're taking the 3 to the third power because it's a set, that number is separate from that variable. Then you have to take that variable of x squared and take it to the third power. So it's like both of these things are getting cubed. Um, and so be really careful with that. Um, the next mistake my students make is they go, okay, so the rule here is multiply. So they're very comfortable with x to the sixth, but then they try to multiply these. We're not multiplying those, that's a power. So it's three to the third. So that should be a 27 and that should be x to the sixth. So this whole thing is gonna take the place of this parenthesis. So then it would look like 2y, 27, x to the sixth, over 9y cubed, x squared. So from here, we have some options. If you want to just work on the numerator and simplify, that's fine. Then we can look at the fraction altogether. If you want to go ahead and start looking top to bottom for what we can put together, that's fine. Because remember, in PEMDAS, multiplication and division are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. I am going to go ahead and hit this 9 and 27. Since everything's multiplied, that looks like something that I can reduce. Get rid of the 9, turns the 27 into a 3, right? And then I would probably go ahead from here and um, do my rule of subtracting, you know, um, the exponents because I've got a y over a y cubed and an x to the sixth over an x squared. So if there's no power on the y, there's a power. It's really a one, right? So I have to subtract y and then it's top minus bottom. So this would really be one minus three, which is negative two. So over here, I'm going to write y to the negative second because, and then that means I've handled those two. And then with the x's, I've got a 6 on top and a 2 on bottom, so it would be x to the 4th. And then whatever numbers are left, that's what I'm going to stick in the middle. So like on the bottom, there's no numbers at all. On the top, there is a 2 and a 3, and those are being multiplied. Everything's multiplied here, so 6. And this would be a good answer if I hadn't told you that negative exponents are ugly and nobody likes them. So let's fix the negative exponent, which just means that for this term and this term only, we need to do that rule from right up here, okay? So I'm going to move the y to the second into the denominator um, because it's really like one over y squared and we're multiplying it by all that stuff. So the six, it's just a normal 6. The x to the 4th is just a normal x to the 4th. This is the troublemaker. And so what ends up happening is it ends up just moving to the denominator. That's what happens with that guy. 
and um, nothing else simplifies, so that would be your final answer. Okay, so now let's do even more fun with these and see what happens. Um, how about something like this? Maybe it's like 2x squared y second x3 y4 to the 0 to 0 and then like x to the negative third all over um, I don't know 8 x to the negative tenth y to the negative fifth okay something like that now here's what's funny you know in math, it's like, we don't want negative exponents, but you know what? Your teachers along the way are perfectly fine with giving you a problem that has negative exponents in it and saying, ha ha, take that sucker. So this is where, you know, it's like, what? It gets really weird. Okay, here's my recommendation. What I told you back here about negative exponents being bad, do not worry about that until the last step. In fact, over here it says, is order important? I'm going to go ahead and make a note. This is not like that you have to do it this way, but it's easier if you wait to move negative exponents until the end. So you've done everything else. Because if you start worrying about this right now, you're going to have fractions inside of fractions. It's going to blow your mind. So right now, don't worry about moving anything. Just work with the numbers that you see. So my first step would be, like I showed you earlier, anything that's got stuff to a power, you need to deal with that first. Okay. So the other thing is the first thing might be power raised to power, just like in PEMDAS. So that's what I'll do here. Um, so it'll become 2. Everything gets squared. So 2 squared is 4. x squared squared is x to the 4th. And then y squared is just y squared. Now I've got all this stuff in parentheses to the 0 power. Well, what happens to that? All of that turns into a 1 according to this rule. So it's like not even there anymore. Yay! And then I've got an x to the negative third back here, okay? All over this. Now, everything on the bottom, nobody goes together. So I'm just going to recopy all of that because nobody goes together. And now the goal or the job is to simplify this. So let's do the numbers together. Well, what is 4 over 8? Well, 4 over 8 is just 1 half, right? 1 over 2. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make my fraction bar a little bit bigger so that I can, you know what, no I'm not. I'll figure that out later. Okay, so now I'm going to do my x's. Now there's an x over an x, so the rule is to do the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So what I'm doing here is x to the 4 minus negative 10. And 4 minus negative 10 is what? Positive 14? Ah, so that little negative thing kind of worked itself out, and we don't have to worry about it too much, okay? Um, so just keep in mind, it's always top minus bottom, no matter which one's bigger, and no matter which one is negative, okay? That, that doesn't matter, just do the rule, top minus bottom. With the y's, I've got 2 minus negative 5. So 2 minus negative 5 is positive 7. And then with the x, there's no one on bottom, so he's really still just x to the negative third. Okay, so now what do I do? Well, if anybody else goes together, you put them together. Otherwise, you're finished. Now, I see two x's right here, right? I've got an x to the 14th and an x to the negative third. These are side by side, so they're being multiplied. So this is like the first rule that we wrote. All you have to do is... Um, add their exponents. So 14 and a negative 3 makes an 11. So this is x to the 11th, y to the 7th. And you can either write that 1 half in the front like we had it before. Um, some people like to see this as one clean fraction. Like instead of having, don't write this, but instead of having this, they're like, ooh, that's a fraction in two terms. That looks weird. Instead, they want to see the whole answer as one fraction. So how could you do that? Well, these are in the numerator because their um, exponents are positive. 
this one is in the numerator. It's an invisible one here. You can write it or you can erase it. And that two would just go on the bottom. So it would look something like that. That's how I would like to see my students write their answer. Okay. All right. So um, that's pretty much it on is order important. Uh, those are my two recommendations. The good thing is order is not as important on these as it is on other things because you can do multiply or divide first so there was a lot of choices that we had back here in the order in which we did it but I would say first thing is if it's a thing to a power please knock that out first okay uh, but other than that and and waiting on negative exponents till the end you kind of can do whatever you want uh, keep that in mind when you're watching the solution video because you may have done your problem and I may approach it in a different order, okay? But in the end, we should get the same thing. All right, good luck, guys.